Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever episode of the Unshackled Waves podcast. You're here with your co-editors-in-chief of the Unshackled.net. I'm Tim Wilms and I'm also joined by Suka Fernando. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, so the, the Unshackled has been up for nearly four weeks now. We've been uh, up to, trying to update it with new and unique stories every day. We've been saying the, the podcast has been, has been coming soon for, for a long time, and now it's finally here. You've, if, you've, if reading is not for you, because I know that a lot of people can't be bothered reading, isn't that right? Yeah, they prefer, they prefer the same, yeah. Uh, so now we're, we're, we're launching the podcast, so you'll now get to listen to us if that's your preferred, preferred way to consume news. So here we are. And yeah. of course, there's a lot that's, that's going on in the world. The progressive left, they're always throwing up new threats to our freedoms and liberties. So I don't think we're ever going to be short of topics to talk about. Oh well, yeah, we won't. And, um, we are seeing more and more examples of how the left is trying to destroy society, you know, and it's under the guise of some sort of moral regime where they try to um, instill their views on everyone else, but, you know, it's really, they have their own um, ulterior motives. Uh, so, uh, and especially with uh, the US, uh, it's only about three weeks now to the U.S. election. They're doing everything they can to destroy uh, Trump. Uh, and back at home, they've, they're getting triggered almost every day by whether it's uh, Pauline Hansen or Cory Bernardi or David Linehelm. Uh, and, they've, and they're always, uh, through all the institutions that the left control, they're always, uh, they're always coming up with new ways to to push push their agenda, which brings us to uh, our first topic that we're going to be talking about this this week, which is the uh, I wrote about this on the Unshackled on Friday is the Victorian government's you can't see me do the quotation marks, but respectful relationships program, which is being introduced by the Victorian government, which is the far left. Uh, uh, Daniel Andrews Labor government and it's going to be mandatory in all state schools in 2017 which is it's being introduced as to allegedly curtail domestic violence but uh, with with uh, judging by the what we've the reports we've seen in the media the past week and also firsthand from the content it's it's pretty much an indoctrination into uh, feminist ideology in, into the state school system. Yeah, I think many people are actually really, really, or many right-wing people are triggered at this new law, I think, because, um, well, again, I think it's a good example of how the left is pursuing policies and other tactics to actually within a disguise, you know, they're trying to make it look like it's for domestic violence, but we know that ultimately they're trying to engineer society. Yeah, and so uh, one of the, yeah, the, the core parts of the, of the program is teaching about male privilege, and it basically yeah. adopts the, the, the patriarchal conspiracy that it's everywhere, even if you, you don't think you have it, you know, you, uh, you, you know, you've, have have the advantage of it every every single day, and that also we need take need to take steps. Or it doesn't explicitly say this, but it but the program says uh, find ways to implement affirmative action to overcome privilege. So what so what exactly is affirmative action again? Affir affirmative action. It's it's giving preferential treatment to uh, hiring people of different gender, races, or sexuality. Okay. Okay. Right. So the, the Labor Party, well, themselves, they have affirmative action in wanting fifty percent of their MPs to be women. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's okay. So that's very aggressive. Yeah. And also, uh, the uh, the the program it also tries to it, it wants to break down uh, gender gender stereotypes, <laughs> and also wants to crack down on gendered language as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So we have to remember that Victoria was the original home of the, the Safe Schools program, which was that was an anti-bullying program. And now we've got this program as well, which is allegedly to stop, stop domestic violence. Yet there is hardly anything in the program which actually talks about how to identify uh, the signs yeah. of domestic violence. Yeah, I don't know about nothing about it says anything about domestic violence or anti-bullying. It's all about teaching them about these new concepts. I mean, I don't understand. Like, how does that have anything to do with domestic violence? Yeah, it's it's basic. Yeah, it's basic. This is what the left does. They ta they take a they take an actual uh, well, you know, we uh, they take an actual problem, which is domestic violence, which let, let's be honest, is already already exagger exaggerated. Obviously, domestic violence goes on and it's terrible, but it's being used by the left to basically. Uh, f uh, or by the fe feminists in particular, to sort of uh, as a as a way to to reshape or well, men and masculinity in their image. Yeah, like again, I think it goes back to how they want to engineer society. Um, and the thing is, people people are falling for it, aren't they? Because everyone's like most students will attend those schools, and now they're going to learn about all that. Think about the effect it'll have. And the fact that, you know, uh, boys are being taught from a very young age that, you know, they're bad, they're naturally aggressive, they're naturally, you know, sexual predators, wife beaters. Like, it, like it really, it really teaches, you know, boys from a young age that, you know, there's, there, there's something wrong with them, that it's, you know, exactly. part of them. And so it's, well, the education system's job to, you know, basically destroy masculinity. It's going to, like... I think it's going to lead many people to make decisions that they will regret, I think. I mean, we already have children who are like five years old who have already changed their gender, you know, and this sort of program will, I think, only encourage that. And of course, the, the Victorian Education Minister, uh, uh, James Milano, who's supposedly from the conservative faction of the Labour Party, he's, he, he's, uh, he's uh, basically said the, the hyperbolic statement that this is about combating domestic violence, basically saying if you don't support the program, you know, you support, you know, women getting beaten up. Yeah, well, that, it, it, yeah, it was the same thing with the Safe Schools program, where they said if you don't support it, you support gay kids getting punched in the face. Yeah, if you don't support it, you're a, hom a homophobe. That's mm. how they use, you know. Just it's the normal, it's the normal shallow rhetoric they use to, you know, persuade people, to persuade um, children, to just follow them. It's disgusting. Mm. And so then, uh, then that brings us to, you know, what what can we do uh, about uh, yeah about this program? Like, what can our response be? Well. I guess the main thing, main, the main thing you can do as a parent is don't send your child to a state school. Yeah, that's the best. Uh, well, I think that's the most important thing you can do. I think is the most pragmatic, I suppose. You know, um, just avoid sending them to any public schools. Because this is only mandatory in state schools. Yeah. Of, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure how whether it's not, uh, going to be an optional program for. Uh, private schools, but it might follow the same format as safe schools, which is going to be mandatory for all uh, state schools, but optional for uh, non-government schools. So does that mean is state schools or all of Australia or...? All of Victoria. So uh, it's, okay. yeah, state uh, government schools are operated by state governments. Yeah, so like, I mean, the state schools, as in the, the program, the Safe Schools program, is it still going on in Victoria? It's going on in Victoria, right? Yeah. So uh, the, the, um, the original version of Safe Schools, which is the, the federal government had the review where they removed yes. some of the what is it, uh, role-playing uh, exercises, like imagine that, you know, you're gay and going out with someone of the same sex, like really, <laughs> really, really messed, messed up stuff. Uh, but that is that is still going to be part of the Victorian curriculum. 
because uh, Daniel Andrews, well, he's a Labour Premier, so he's like, no, we need, I, I'm in Victoria, we're going to go it alone, we're going to have the uh, um, uncensored safe schools program. Right, so how about the country? Is New South Wales calling the same thing? New South Wales <laughs> has, has, has got the amended version of safe schools. Okay. Uh, uh, there's pressure in New South Wales to get rid of it completely. Okay. There was a petition presented to New South Wales Parliament by a uh, government backbencher, um, so they're having a debate a debate about it. Yes, I, I hope they remove that. Yeah. So yeah, so we're still de trying to fight safe schools, but now we've got this new new program uh, yeah, that's going to be coming in next year and. Uh, it'll be, yeah, sadly, uh, my home state, Victoria, is the, is the, is the first one, but this will probably spread to other states when they have Labour governments. You're probably lucky there in New South Wales, you've got a, a Liberal oh, Premier. <laughs> I thank God we have Mike. I'm so happy we have Mike. Yeah, and, yeah, well, my, Mike there has his own problems. He does, he does, yeah. yeah. But, you know, he's not a radical social re-engineering type. Exactly, exactly. So that's a big, that's a big relief. <laughs> uh, you, can't, you can't go out at night time in Mike Bear's New South Wales, but at least, you know, yeah. your children are, uh, you know, safe from, uh, partly that. safe from the leftist indoctrinators. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. what else can we do? I mean, so we have... We could avoid sending our children to state schools, but the thing is, it'll still go on in state schools. Yeah. And so we, I think we need to solve the root of the problem, which is having it in state schools. So how do you propose? Well, parents need to, you know, basically wake up to yeah what's being taught taught in government schools. I mean, uh, Australian people in general have way too much faith in the education system, thinking that they're their children are getting a, a well-rounded education and you know because parents aren't paying attention the the leftists they've taken over the, the education system and so uh, they've they've got the perfect opportunity to indoctrinate children into into their worldview without parents hardly paying any attention i mean the some backlash has started with 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 safe schools but a lot still needs to, like, parents need to be a lot more active, you know, going to, um, parent, you know, parent-teacher meetings and, you know, really making, you know, writing, uh, writing letters to the principal, you know, saying, you know, we don't want this. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, today, doing that, like, complaining about it or criticising it result in you being called a homophobe or someone who's, you know, spreading hate speech, because that's the, so that makes it weird. Yeah, you know. we're, st we're still got, I mean, the ultimate thing that'll stop this in Victoria is a uh, change in government, but we don't have our state yeah. election until November 2018. So okay. we've st still got two more of, the, the program will be in place for, for at least two years. Uh, the Victorian Liberal opposition has stated they want to get rid of safe schools, but they haven't made a commit uh, the same commitment for this program. So, so they are um, at least aware that Safe Schools is uh, an indoctrination program so, and uh, have said they're going to get rid of it. So let's hope they promise the, sa the same thing with this. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, we might actually have some global support because this news, this, this story has made global news. Like the BBC reported on this. Yeah. Was it last Yeah. Yeah. So, um... So we might end up getting some global support. Um, well, we're, 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 Victoria is a global laughing stock uh, at the exactly. moment. I mean, yeah. you know, we we being, you know, our children are being taught, you know, like the fe you know feminist worldview as compulsory part of the curriculum. I mean, it's it's already being made fun of in um, anti-feminist YouTube videos. It, it is, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, so uh, that's one thing, uh, one new battle that we're up against is, uh, of, of, you know, feminism now basically becoming mandatory in schools. 
But let's move on to the, ne uh, the next topic that was in the news this week, which is the rise in support for uh, Pauline Hanson's One Nation. Yes. I personally, I just, I love Pauline. She's, uh, she's my idol. <laughs> Yeah, like, obviously I'm a member of the uh, Liberal Democrats, so I'm not, uh, uh, I wouldn't vote for One Nation, but I do think that Pauline serves an important purpose, especially uh, with regard to, uh, you know, immigration. You know what, I, I do identify more with the LDP. One thing is, I feel like if... Pauline was in my electorate, or if One Nation was in my electorate, I might actually vote for One Nation. I've been thinking about that lately. One Nation, I still have problems with their, their economic policy, but exactly. I, 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 still, the yeah. Yeah. Like, I still support uh, free, uh, free trade and um, yeah, a less, uh, a less government intervention in the economy. One Nation still has a largely protectionist degree and socialist economic policy yeah. but obviously the issue that uh, you know they they campaign on the most is is immigration yeah. and I'm not surprised at the the growth in I think her support is now it's now at 10 percent in the lower house yes yeah and so they're actually saying that um, she she has a good chance of winning a handful of seats in the Queensland Parliament. Uh, at yeah. the next state election, and so the the Liberal National opposition in Queensland are now being asked, you know, will, will you form a coalition with One Nation uh, if if the result is is a hung parliament? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, because uh, yeah, One Nation in the nineteen ninety eight Queensland state election actually won eleven seats. Oh wow! I heard in the Australian that. Do, are they set to win 10 seats this time? I saw something like that. Yeah, they, they, ha they have a chance of... The next Queensland state election is scheduled for early 2018. So it's still a while away. It's a while away. Okay, okay so they're speculating. But I heard... I read in Australia news for today that it might be 10 seats or something that they'll win. Yeah, which, which could good. easily result in a hung parliament. It could, yeah. I wonder if the Liberals will do a coalition, because yeah. the, the Liberal, the, the Federal, the, the Australian Party doesn't have a very good relationship with One Nation. Well, uh, you know, it's not surprising that support for One Nation is on the rise, considering uh, last week there was the, the bipartisan uh, motion to uh, continue Muslim immigration. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. Malcolm Turnbull moved the motion and Bill Shorten seconded it, supported oh. by both the major parties. So basically, the yeah, uh, both Liberal and Labor were saying, uh, you know, we don't care what half the Australian public thinks. We're just going to let whoever continue to let whoever into the country. That, that actually that triggered me so much. Like we elected them to do what we want them to do, not to like lecture us about what we think, you know. The, was it the, um, the essential poll? Yeah, it? essential poll, 49% support a ban of on Muslim immigration. Exactly, what they tell us, like, they slap us in the face and tell us, oh no, you know, um, we know better than you and therefore we will allow Muslims to come to this country. Um, yeah, well, they're not doing their job properly, are they? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, it's just going, kind of like, uh, as time goes by and we see, you know, more and more negative consequences from Muslim immigration, and if the major parties continue to uh, ignore the Australian people's concerns, then uh, support for for Pauline is just going to keep growing and growing. Exactly. You know, but this, this will all result in more support for Pauline Hanson, and I like that. You know, I want one nation to actually get more support because this immigration policy is just too reckless. You know, it's going to ruin our society. Uh, especially that they want to accept uh, uh, 12,000 Syrian refugees in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, we, we were told at the beginning that it was going to be oh, only persecuted minorities, but they've it's, just, they've, yeah, they've just let, 
Yeah, they've, they're just letting heaps of Muslims in as well. I mean, that was that was just spin. It turns out. <laughs> they betrayed us with that. <laughs> and so it's it's not surprising that yeah, yeah that poor, yeah that Pauline Pauline support continu- it continues to grow. And we saw just last week there were those two teenagers who were arrested for. Ooh. Uh, planning a, a terrorist plot, and, yeah, it tu- yeah, yeah, yeah. and it turned out that they'd had a history of extremist activity. And actually, one of them, uh, do you remember the uh, the anti um, when that um, uh, Mus- uh, Muslim video was released on YouTube back in twenty eleven? You know, the, the innocence of Muslims. Oh my gosh, no, it's tw- was it 2011? Yeah. No, I, I don't know that. Then. Oh, well, there was a rally in Sydney by a bunch of angry Muslim men uh, uh, <laughs> denouncing this video as, you know, ins- you know, insulting Islam. They chanted stuff like, uh, Obama, we love Osama. And there was, um, and there was a kid that, <laughs> and there was a kid that held a sign behead those who insult the prophet. Yes, I remember this. I know this. Yeah, and that kid was the one who was just arrested. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. Small world. Yes, so... So, so an event from five years ago, which I, I remember of... Uh, I think it was Dean Madigan. Uh, she's one of the leftist commentators. Said at the time, it's, uh, it's just people, uh, you know, uh, young people playing up. Well, you know, five years later, one of those one of those kids at that rally was it, it was planning a terrorist attack. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe they are still ignorant, aren't they? Like they're just children turning up. Are you serious? I mean, those children were chanting the most violent things you could hear. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're set, you know, we're, I mean, the, yeah, the major parties, they're, they're just hoping that the problem will go away, but, you know, we're, we're seeing just things deteriorate, uh, deteriorate worse and worse. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which, which brings us to, uh, talking about governments not listening to, not listening to the people, that also brings us to governments uh, not letting the people speak at all, which is uh, yeah. the attacks on free speech continue uh, in Australia. Uh, we just learnt yesterday that a complaint has been lodged against uh, Bill Leake's cartoon in The Australian uh, a month ago. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's so hilarious. <laughs> like, these people have no sense of personal responsibility. I, I just don't understand. Uh, like, uh, you know, speaking to a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, I, I term them, you know, normal people, or as I call them, you know, part of the masses, they thought, well, oh, that cartoon was, you know, it was pretty blunt, but it was accurate that, uh, in, oh. yeah, in Aboriginal community, uh, this is the cartoon where uh, an Aboriginal policeman holds a kid uh, in front of his uh, Aboriginal dad and and says, you need to take uh, better better care of your child. And his response is, oh, what's his name again? Oh, was that all? Yeah. And, and, the, and the Aboriginal parent had a beer in his, can, in his hand as well. Oh, okay. Well, the thing is, uh, it is a stereotype, but it's quite... The, the sad truth is it's quite an accurate stereotype. Yeah. I mean, there is huge alcoholism uh, in exactly. Aboriginal communities, and there also is uh, child abuse and child neglect as well. I mean, and yeah. this cartoon was in response to their hysteria over the Dondale uh, Detention Centre um, uh, treatment of the youths when Malcolm Turnbull called a Royal Commission, uh, what, just, what, 12 hours after the Four Corners program was broadcast? <laughs> And so after that cartoon was published, uh, what's his name from the uh, the race discrimination commissioner Tim? Uh, his last name I can't pronounce, which means that uh, I'm racist towards him because he said that. Oh. <laughs> so Pomisani, so, so something like that. Yeah, oops. Oh, yeah. His name. <laughs> oh, oh, oops, I think I think I mispronounced it. Um, he'll think I'm a racist. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so he urged people to complain to the Human Rights Commission. So that's what they did. So now there's a uh, there's a complaint against Bill Lee, and now the Race Discrimination Commissioner is the one who decides whether the complaint is upheld or not. <laughs> so Bill Lee's got to hire uh, lawyers to defend himself, uh, and uh, and it could result in the the cartoon being banned. Uh, the same I as uh, Andrew Bolt's two articles a few years back were banned. I mean, that just goes to show, it just goes to show how the left is progressive. You know, they couldn't get the article banned, which is a good, it's a good thing, but well, they couldn't get banned, but, and they end up wasting everyone else's time. I was, I was wondering, so, what was his name, what was his name, Tim, was it Tim something, was it? Yeah, uh, the Race Discrimination Commission, yes, Tim to, yeah. to that's uh, Sue Pomisani. Okay, well, him. Okay. We should have a, 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 a sound button where where we press racist whenever we do something that could be interpreted sure, as racist. Good effect, yeah. But I was wondering, he was... So the thing is, he was complaining about the treatment of the children, right? Yeah. Well... The thing is, I saw the videos, and I was confronted, to be honest. But you have to also understand that, like the uh, the children who are in those youth detention detention centres, they you know, are some of the most violent youth offenders. I mean, the uh, you know the poster child for uh, so to speak of um, the abuse in those detention centres, Dylan Bollier. He he was he he like been convicted of over fifty offences, and last time was. Uh, uh, att attacking, assaulting a person while drunk and on ice. Okay. I don't know, I feel like, I still feel like they were being a bit, a bit too violent on them, I don't know. Um, well, obviously it would be better if that didn't occur, but we also have to, uh, uh, have to understand the context in... in yes, yeah. exactly. I think and, and what the Bill Lee cartoon was trying to communicate, if, you know, very sort of controversially, was that um, uh, the um, no, uh, par uh, parenting and um, uh, youth violence in Aboriginal communities is is part of the problem as well. I mean, it's not just, it's, it's not just you know, these racist white police cards, uh, uh, pol police off, uh, prison officers, I should say, just, you know, beating up Aboriginal kids because, yeah, we, you know, we hate black people, like, that's, oh, that's definitely. silly. That, yeah, that wasn't racist, I mean, I agree with that wholeheartedly, it wasn't racist at all, it's just, we, we do, we have to understand that, you know, the parents should, should be responsible, we need to understand that, and right now, most Aboriginal parents aren't responsible, many aren't responsible. Yeah. So we've got another uh, 18C uh, case on our hands. This is on top of the one that's ongoing with the Queensland University of, of Technology uh, case where the students were kicked out of the Aboriginal-only computer lab. They complained on Facebook about it and this academic, Cindy Pryor, got triggered by it and so she complained to the Human Rights Commission. So <laughs> she, uh, she didn't feel safe around white people now. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is pathetic. Wow. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so she she's the most uh, what is it special snowflake of them all. Uh, yes. But obviously, because uh, this one with Bill Lake obviously is a bit more high profile. Hopefully, this will keep the the eighteen C um, eighteen C issue on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. And there's there was another thing because you did the article last week. About it. The uh, the uh, the article about the um you you, were, you were talking about the was it the four one seven? Oh yes, there, there's another law against free speech, which yeah, that, which yeah. ha which hardly gets any attention. That's section four seven four seventeen of the federal criminal code, which makes it illegal to uh or criminally. Uh, illegal to um, use a carriage service, which is means a um, telecommunications uh, 
uh, tool. So that can be uh, either phone or internet to uh, menace, threaten, and the keyword is offend somebody. <laughs> Oh so it's actually illegal in Australia to offend somebody on Facebook, which is uh, which is because 18C is only a civil a civil law. You can only be sued or have have an article or your work banned. While with with Section 474, you can actually go to prison for a maximum of two years. And of, and of course, this was uh, most recently used against. The um, the man who abused Nova Paris on Facebook. <laughs> oh yes, I um, okay. That that was hilarious. What he, what he said. <laughs> but did you read the full full uh, full quote? Well, it was I did. Do you want to say it? Uh, uh, do you want to say it? <laughs> well, have you got the full quote in front of you? I have, I have the one you used on your article. Oh, that was just a selection. The, fu the full quote is, like, when, you know, he uses, like, racial slurs against her, and... Uh, the, the full quote is much worse, like... Um, uh, what, I, what I just posted was just a sample. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to repeat what he actually said, because it was pretty bad. Oh, uh, hold on. I want to I wanna check what it is. So, it was... Okay. Uh, is it bad yet? Yeah. Uh, just look, just look up yeah Nova Paris Facebook. I oh, just do that. Yeah. Oh my god. We're doing our research while the show is broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't see the full quote. I, I thought it was just wow. Like, I think I would never have. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's that's quite full on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would never have said the other quote, the sample either. I wouldn't have said that to yeah. anyone. Right, that's quite full on. In yeah. my in my article about section four seventy four, I provide a link to the full quote. So, yeah, I have. Uh -oh. this, yeah, so we we should put a trigger warning there that you know if you can't. We should. Yeah, that you know it's it's pretty full on language. <laughs> well, that guy was given a suspended suspended jail term and uh, a two-year good behaviour bond simply for, you know, writing this comment to Nova Perra. So, you know, she you know, she was a senator for three years. I mean, you know, you're supposed to be able to handle, like, abuse like that. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 the, the sentence was too much still. Yeah. But we have to remember, she, she was a special snowflake herself. She said that, unless you're an Aboriginal, don't criticise me. Did she say, oh, are you serious? Yeah, she, that, said, she said that when yeah. people criticised her for retiring from politics only after three years. <laughs> wow. I, that's just, yeah. So that means criticising her for that is racist now. Mm. So that's what we're ranting about. You know, that's the problem today. Uh, so um, this law hasn't been used... Uh, uh, wide, uh, widespread at the moment, but the fact that it's there is still very concerning. Uh, I mean, if it, was, yeah. if it was used, then I think hundreds of people would be yeah, Because if the police decided to, as they've done in England and Scotland, decided to crack down on, you know, internet trolls and mean comments, then, yeah. yes, uh, if, if they decided to do that in Australia, we'd have, you know, hundreds of these court yeah. cases. Wow, yeah. That, the England thing, the England thing is really, really, it's, it's a bit sad, I think. It's like happening in the UK. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, we've also saved the best topic for last, which is the US election and the media yeah. doing everything they can to uh, destroy oh. Trump's chances. There was the leak of the Trump tapes. Where, uh, uh, it was... It was a week and a half ago now, last Friday. Yeah. Uh, where where was talk he talked about how, you know, if, yeah, because he was really famous, he could pretty much get away with doing anything to a woman. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm sorry, I don't. Well, it was, it, you know, it was just, like, yeah, I, I mean, 
I, obviously not all guys talk like that, but, you know, when guys are around other guys, they, you know, they can, you know, their, their discussion can, you know, degenerate into just, you know, uh, primal sexual talk. Yeah, that's natural. I mean... Yeah. And, like, he, he was talking about doing things. Like, there's no evidence that he's, at, you know, he, that's what he's actually done. I mean, you know, like, men, you know, uh, are naturally attracted to, you know, beautiful women. And they often talk about it. Yeah. And there's, not, there's no shame in that. And the thing is, now the media is talking about it, and they're going against nature now. They're, you know, they're, it's another example of how the media is sort of discouraging men to be men. Mm. Well, yeah. it's, it's okay if you're um, gay and, you know, are attracted to, to men. He was gay. And he said that about a man, then there would be nothing. There yeah. would be, in fact, it would be homophobic to criticize him. Yeah. And part of this, you know, continuing, like, feminist war on, basically, heterosexual relations. Yeah. It, it, yeah it's, it all comes down to that. It's just the feminist war against masculinity and... Yeah, and of course uh, it's been followed by suddenly all these women coming out of you know the woodwork saying that Trump inappropriately inappropriately touched me, and it's like yes. half of them are just like he you know it was you know it, like it, it wasn't even full on like sexual assault. And it wasn't, and yeah. um, I did the article. Remember the, the article I did last week? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it was only a few days ago. Because I really yeah. Yes, it's in the yeah. Um, it's all, all the eyes. I mean, if you, re if you read the article, then you'd know that the Jennifer Leeds, she's one of the women, that her um, her actual complaint about it is very similar to a song lyric. The song, the song lyrics. And there's lots of info that actually debunks her thing. Like, the, an actual witness came out and told the media that, she was lying. That she was sitting. That he was sitting right opposite them, and that in fact Jennifer Leeds was actually flirting with Trump in the first place, yeah. and that Trump actually didn't do anything. He walked away um, and ex excused himself to go to the toilets. So it's all a myth. It's all they're all rumors. Yeah, and the fact uh, that uh, when these women like speak, you know, there's no sort of, you know, they're not crying or appearing distressed. You know, they're they're you know saying them very. Uh, they're making these allegations like, you know, just if they were, uh, you know, talking normally. Exactly. I know. It, you and can tell that they're, they're acting, like, especially with the, what was her name, the blonde. Um, I forgot her name, but it was Anderson. Yeah, Kristen Anderson. You could, you could tell that she was lying. I mean, come on. And, and of course, uh, you know, these allegations, like, obviously there's hardly any evidence to support them, but none of them are anywhere near as bad as what Bill Clinton has done. That's, that's exactly right. That's and of course, exactly. the allegations against him weren't, you know, invented like a week ago. You know, they've <laughs> been around for, what, 20, nearly 30 years. Exactly. The, the difference between his allegations and Trump's allegations are that Trump's the event actually happened, apparently happened like 35 years ago. But they're coming out now, but Bill it has been there for decades. Uh, and not forget, uh, not forgetting that also Bill Clinton had to settle um, uh, several sexual harassment cases. So he yeah. had, so actually in their settlements uh, admitted guilt. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. But the left is denying that. I saw, I, I saw an article comparing Bill Clinton and Donald Trump are saying why we don't believe Bill. I forgot the actual headline. But it was like, why do we believe Trump now? But yeah, I, can't, I, believe. I can't believe the progressives. They completely ignore you know the the huge evidence against Bill Clinton. Yeah, that's just again. You know, and we saw that you know Trump. You know he's not afraid to you know talk about Bill, uh, you know Bill Clinton's rape and sexual assault. That's uh, he brought brought Bill Clinton's victims to the second debate. <laughs> that was, that was so hilarious. Like, they were right there. Yeah. I loved, I loved it, I yeah. loved it. No, no, no Republican, uh, no other Republican candidate would have done that. 
I actually yeah. saw one Republican strategist interviewed who said if he was advising Trump, he would have advised him against bringing out uh, Juanita Broderick and Paula Jones. Yeah, well, that's why. Mm. There's, a re- there's a reason why Trump is there in the debate and the others are not there in the debate. And, and in the second debate, when Trump brought up Bill Clinton's uh, 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 sexual assaults, Hillary didn't even address it. She just said, oh, well, I just prefer not to talk about those issues. Yeah, she was like, they're all lies. You could tell, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to assume, but I could tell from my face. You know, she was like, they're all lies. All he said, all those things he said were false. That's what he said. And I could tell she was lying. And she always does. But it's still amazing that even though Trump and his supporters are making sure there is proper scrutiny of, of Bill Clinton's sexual assault, uh, uh, and it is relevant to Hillary because she threatened these women and helped enable Bill to continue to assault women, so it is, it is rela- related to her as well. And the fact that Bill Clinton will be, if Hillary wins the first gentleman, I mean, he will, you know, play a big role in in, shape, in shaping a Clinton administration. Yeah, exactly. And and, I, think yeah. I think it's quite hilarious how, like, she pretends to, you know, be a feminist, and she pretends that we need to... Well, I don't know if she pretends, but she says we need to listen to all, all rape victims and believe them all. But, you know, here she is telling her husband's victims to, you know, shut the hell up. Yeah. So we've still got, it's now three weeks to go. I mean, uh, the 538, uh, this is Nate Silver's 538.com poll aggregator website, has Hillary with an 86% chance of winning. The polls have widened a bit, uh, quite a bit in favour of Hillary, but I say it's not over yet. It's not, it's not. The polls don't always um, capture the actual reality, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of people who'd be afraid to tell a pollster that they're voting for yeah. Trump, but will will vote for Trump in the privacy of a ballot booth. So I don't think it's over over by a long shot. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think there's, there's still hope. I mean, there's, there's always hope until the very end. Yeah, but, it, yeah, it's... It's just interesting that the the dirt machine is just going into well panic mode. They're just throwing any allegation at Trump that they can. Yeah. And I um with regards to that, I heard this rumor that that, that someone might leak something about Hillary this week. Well, we, well, I'm not sure if WikiLeaks like, uh, have got any additional information. I mean, they've uh, they've really um, dam- damaged Hillary with leaking her secret speeches from uh, Wall Street, all the uh, John Podesta yeah. emails. Yeah, I mean, I, she calls. She, this, this is what she says. I quote: "She says, um, with the low social." Low social capital individuals, she calls a bunch of a bunch of losers. I mean, but there's no media backlash, is there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Hillary behind the scenes. I mean, we we get a good indication of what she's really like. We do, and she's not the you know sweet grandmother. She is not. That's just an act. We know she's evil. Okay, and if she wins. There might be a World War III, but... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, there's already, I mean, Obama's foreign policy is that, you know, we need to um, uh, crack down on Russia, Russia, Russian involvement in Syria. <laughs> That's ironic. Yeah. But we'll talk about that uh, for another for another right. episode, because it's, it's time to wrap up now, episode one of the Unshackled Waves podcast. Uh, so, uh, if you're listening to it now, then we recorded it right, and it's uploaded onto, we're hoping to get it up on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, SoundCloud, and also YouTube as well. Yeah. So, so we're talking in the past tense here, we're hoping to get it out there, so if you're listening on one, uh, one of those platforms, then obviously we did get it there. We did. Yeah. <laughs> and we aim to have this uh, podcast on twice a week. Uh, every Tuesday, Sukath and I will talk about the week's events, 
uh, just yeah. talk about what ridiculousness is going on in the world and also uh, where there's some hope. And also every Thursday we will be joined by a special guest who we will interview and ask them questions about, uh, about their, their area of expertise or their area of life experience. So we hope you listen to that as well. So, yeah. th uh, so thank you for listening. I hope we put on a good show for you and we will, we will see you uh, for the next episode. Yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in and, you know, we hope we can all break the chains of control, ultimately. Yeah, and don't forget to check out the unshackled.net uh, for, for the latest news. Alright, goodbye. Bye-bye.